Welcome to Upstate South Carolina. Two old rivals getting set to meet for the 170th time. Clemson and South Carolina here at Little John Coliseum. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. The hardware in the house this afternoon. A couple of national championship trophies, an ACC title, and the Palmetto Series championship as well. With Jordan Cornett, Roy Philpott, great to have you along on this Sunday. Let's play some basketball. Jordan, it's always great when you have two old rivals like this getting together. Oh, yeah. The fan bases, they're hyped for this one, Roy. The teams, they're hyped for this one. The coaches making sure their players know the history. Clemson struggling. Lost their last three games. Got to get right on their home floor. What better way to do it than against a heated rival like South Carolina? Well, the Tigers in search of breaking that losing streak. Two programs separated by just 132 miles. And Clemson has won the last three in this series. In fact, Frank Martin in search of his first career victory here at Little John Coliseum. Clemson led by Tevin Mack, started his career, Jordan, at Texas before he ended up at Alabama, and now his final season here in Tigertown. A very difficult matchup in 6'6", versatile, shoots good percentages, makes good decisions. He came here to Clemson because coach gave him the green light, and he is not hesitant against the South Carolina defense. They are long and wiry as well. They protect the rim, making it difficult to go downhill. Mack must find those opportunities and be in full pursuit. Tevin Mack originally from Columbia, South Carolina. So this one means a little bit more to the graduate transfer. And moments ago, Brad Brownell, Frank Martin, respecting each other and this rivalry the way that you like to see good sportsmanship between two veteran coaches, the Gamecocks and the Tigers. Means a little bit more in this state, Jordan. You understand how rivalries go. Clemson fans going to work with South Carolina fans. Bragging rights on the line once again. Bragging rights within the same state. They want to steal fans. If they're not going to steal them. They want their fans to have the bragging rights when they go out to dinner, go to the grocery store. <laughs> That's what college sports are about. It's the beauty of this thing. Frank Martin, year number eight. Gamecocks this season. Led by A.J. Lawson, the talented sophomore. And Frank's been talking a lot in the media about this team this year. He loves the chemistry, loves the makeup, and he thinks their best basketball is right in front of them starting tonight and led by A.J. Lawson. Yeah, and they're young. It's a young group, so Coach is really digging in, molding these guys. And he was very quick to say, it's a good group of guys. They listen, they're coachable, and that's exactly what I want for my program. He's excited about what's ahead, excited about the challenge this evening. ACC versus SEC, Brad Brownell, year number 10. Trip to the Sweet 16 two seasons ago. Lost in the second round to Wichita State in the NIT last year. He's been dealing with injuries. We've got a team that's banged up. We've got one of the youngest teams in the Southeastern Conference. Curious to see how both seasons conclude, but this is a critical matchup today. Resume building and all the things you love to talk about come March. And with Jonathan Bear returning, added depth to a Clemson team that needs to make shots. Something to focus on, both teams and their ability to convert. Happy holidays underway at Little John Coliseum. Clemson in the home white uniform, South Carolina in the road garnets underway. We expect physicality, we expect defense in this one, Jordan. Sims top of the key, left open, count it, and a good start for the Tigers. It's a tough matchup for Coach Sarr to have to come out and respect the three-point shot of Sims. A versatile matchup and a mismatch clearly here out of the gates. He's been shooting the basketball better the last couple of games. Here's Keyshawn Bryant making his first start of this season. He's been injured. He's played in the last two, however, for Coach Frank Martin. Manaya left open. And he responds from downtown. We're tied at three. I asked for shot making. It has delivered in the first 60 seconds. Now two teams that have struggled shooting from the outside. Come out blazing. Both programs off of exams this past week. So they've had about seven days off. Mac top of the key. Comes up short. And tap back to Hunter Tyson who corrals it. And a fresh 20. Dawes left open, the freshman. And Sims throws it to Lawson. 
really interesting because Clemson is not an offensive rebounding team having early success. Lawson with authority. He may be the most talented player on the floor this afternoon. A lot of people talking about A.J. Lawson at the next level, Jordan. Well, if you're flipping channels and wondering who South Carolina is, they have a potential first-round draft pick in Lawson. We're sticking around to watch. Newman caught in traffic. Whip it around the horn. Dawes. The extra pass to Mack. And the rebound tracked down again by Hunter Tyson. Two minutes in, Gamecocks by two, and Lawson corrals a loose basketball. Patient defense from Coach Sar is the last line of defense. Stripped out of there by Newman. Tigers in transition. Trailers Dawes from downtown. Clemson back in front. This is not your Clemson basketball team of old. They are not playing inside out. They are hoisting the three-point shot, living and at times dying by it. And right, we're seeing that more in college basketball, even with the extended three-point arc stolen away by Newman. I'll tell you right now, they got a pulse from that three-point line. They've hoisted a lot, but they've had some luck with two to build this very slim lead in the first three minutes. Tyson trapped. Dawes open for just a moment. Back iron. Bryant skies for the board. Convincing rebound from Bryant. South Carolina happy to have him back on this roster. An elite athlete and his health. Has arrived. Can he contribute today? A little step back by Bolden off the mark. Six to five. Three minutes in. Do you like the extended three-point arc this season? It's a little different, and percentages are down. Uh, mediocre shooters don't like it because it's exposed them as poor shooters with the averages you look across the college landscape. So guys need to be more selective with that shot. Off of Sims, back to South Carolina. Hasn't been transition basketball, but it's been hurried in the half court. Not a lot of movement. First look. Take that thing and go. Against the man-to-man -man and a turnover. Three so far for Carolina. Daw split the defenders. Open look for Mack. Rainbow triple as well short. That is a great contest for Manaya to challenge that three-point shot. It's been a consistent theme we've heard from Frank Martin the last 10 days or so as Kotsar connects. He wants more on the defensive end of the floor. It's just that's a hustle play coming from Manaya. It's not going to show up in any shot sheet, but it was able to alter the shot and get Kotsar the basket on the other end. Pump fake by Tyson. He'll feed Mack inside. Rejected from behind, and Manaya snuck in there. And I, again, making defensive plays. It's what gets him on the floor. Knows positioning and executes plays defensively to give this team a boost. Gamecocks back to work. Bryant, the athleticism, and he makes a big difference in the starting five for Carolina. And where Clemson's doing it from the outside, South Carolina establishing themselves in the paint, trying to get two feet there on dribble drives or low post touches. A fast-moving first half. Here in Clemson, South Carolina. Newman tied up, and Kotsar swatted that one out of bounds. Troy, nothing comes easy in a rivalry game. Great defense, but not here. The punctuation from the future pro. Back in Clemson, mentioned the rule change this year in college basketball as the sport adjusts to the FIBA distance, the three-point arc, 22 feet, an inch and three quarters, and that means three-point percentages so far across the nation, Jordan, have plummeted ever so slightly. Well, and I think that's why you're seeing a lion's share of these games early in the college basketball season, very low-scoring outputs because there is an adjustment there. Shooters are finding their footing. Some guys have been hesitant to take it. Some have really struggled there. And you've also seen on a baseline, it's an awkward position because that spacing is extremely limited, and it can be a turnover by simply stepping out of bounds. So guys are establishing, hey, can I shoot this shot? The great shooters, they're okay. But we're starting to weed out those average ones. 
Nathan Nelson checking in for South Carolina. Just his fifth appearance of this season. And that's 14 in Garnet. Also Jonathan Bear in for the Tigers. Playing in just his second game this year after tearing his ACL earlier in the year. And I think this might be a statement from, from Coach Martin. Not liking what he's seen of Jair Bolden out of the gates here. Uh, a turnover, decision making, defensively not being in position. you got to defend to play for Coach Martin. Sims the spin. And he traveled. Teddy Valentine, the official there, leading this crew. Doug Schaus and Mike Stevens. Jonathan Bear, originally from Germany, started his career at UNC Asheville. Sat out last season. Mentioned the ACL tear, and that really put Clemson's program back a couple of months earlier this year. He'll grab the rebound here. Really focus on Bear. He's got a tough matchup versus Bryant coming off that ACL. Only 13 minutes versus Florida State. Can he find a rhythm? Yeah, it was scoreless in those 13 minutes too, Jordan. Here's a steal by Bryant. South Carolina active early. Kusnar checking in for the first time for the Gamecocks as well. Number five in Garnet. Kotsar turns it over. Kotsar had nothing. That's a poor decision. A couple probing dribbles. Work that basketball around. Find a better one. And Sims held by Nelson. That'll be his first. So what was it like for you playing in rivalry games at Notre Dame? I mean, you felt the different level of intensity, correct? Well, yeah, because you know what it means not only to your team. A win or loss is always paramount. But you know what it means to the fan base. You know that they have a little extra invested in it in their neighborhoods, in their areas. So you feel that. That could be pressure or that can give you a, a more excited and a little bit more of a boost. Give you a little edge. An edge. And that's what Coach Martin's looking for with the South Carolina team. Nasty crossover from Dawes off the mark. Sims on the offensive glass. He's going to be tied up. Arrow favors South Carolina. That is five offensive rebounds for a Clemson team that doesn't get a lot of them. They are really competing on that side, understanding how physical South Carolina is. Well, coming up, our Week 15 Monday Night Football matchup. Jacoby Brissett and the Colts in New Orleans to take on Drew Brees and the 10-3 and Saints. Monday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. Coverage, of course, starts with Monday Night Countdown at 6. Colts trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. Saints in search of a bye in the first round as Clemson gives it right back to the Gamecocks. Well, Bear didn't fall on his own. That's not how gravity works. I think a body connected with him, and the fans don't appreciate it because there's a whistle. Poor post-entry. Deflection gathered by Bear. Minimal contact from Nelson on the head, but enough to cause the fall. Hence the boost. Stuck on 9-6 to six for the last two minutes in traffic. And two free throws coming for Jermaine Kuznar. But to me, when you see Bear fall like that, that's a lack of trust in that left leg still recovering from that ACL. The repetition's not there, so the trust is not earned on both of those, both of those legs. He is gingerly moving on that left leg still, and that'll come with time. Kusnard, part of the meat and potatoes for Frank Martin's team this year, and Coach was talking with us about what he means to South Carolina basketball this season. He said, you know, he's tough, he's gritty. He brings some things to the table that we need more of, quite frankly, Jordan. And he misses having Chris Silva alongside him with that interior defense. Six foot eight, a guy who's proven in the pros what he can deliver. A guy that he played alongside. Ten to six, Gamecocks with their largest lead. As Kotsar checks out, and Wildens Levesque on the floor for the first time. Good start on the road in this ACC SEC matchup. Almost seven minutes in. Chase Hunter checking in for Clemson. He's missed the last four games as Hannibal was out of control. And kind of a helter-skelter pace. Six turnovers now for the Gamecocks. And that highlights the struggle to identify a true point guard with this Gamecocks team. In transition, a, a solid guard, solid guard play converts there. It's a turnover for a team still gaining confidence at the point guard position and guard play in general. Hunter turns it over. He's missed the last four games with a foot injury off the bench today. You got guys coming back from injuries. We mentioned the ACL tears, a foot injury. 
takes a little time for the body to remember how to react. And then also mentally, there's a couple of obstacles to overcome too, right? And you know what? The games don't wait. They keep coming. And excuses can't be made. Guys got to step up. Next man has to deliver. High ball screen for Manaya. How about something going at the rim? They've had such success in the trenches. Try and challenge the intestinal fortitude of this Clemson defense. Settle it. Rebounded by Bear. Tigers, more than four minutes since their last point. A couple of three-pointers, that's it so far. Scott, the Tulsa transfer. And it's back to South Carolina. Jordan, is it better offense? Or poor offense, rather, and better defense so far? What do you see? Clemson's taking high-volume shots, and they've been decent looks. The same thing that's plagued them for the majority of the season. They have not been able to hit these shots. Carolina has found their success getting into the paint, and they've shot away from that these last few possessions. They must make a concerted effort to play downhill. Kusnar, the runner, well short. The putback, and count it for Trey Hannibal. But aggressive basketball driving begets a finish at the rim. Because of that drive, you have offensive rebounders in position to finish off a play. Now approaching six minutes since Clemson's last point. Hunter, a long two, tapped out by Jemison. And Scott was fouled. Kusnard picks up his first. South Carolina off to a good start on the road. Kevin, thank you very much. Back here at Little John Coliseum. Tar Heels, one of five programs from the ACC, ranked in the top 25. But Jordan, they got to find a way to score the basketball. Cole Anthony's out today. We get it. Their offense really under scrutiny right now. Roy, they needed to find a way to score with Cole Anthony. And, and his usage being so high, you take out the guy that you rely so heavily on, you really have a lot of questions to answer. That interior is going to have to be elite to keep them above water until Cole Anthony hopefully returns quickly. That game over on ACC Network, the old Carmichael Arena. I guess auditorium is what they, really what they called it back in the day. First time there in 33 years. Clemson just 2 of 12 from the floor. Dawes will try to change that, and he will. That shot from bonus land. And the three-point shot in college hoops. If you can make them, you got a chance. If not, you don't have a prayer. I'd like to see Coates on a low block right here. Challenge Jemison to move and make plays defensively. Guy who gets very few minutes. Bryant. One possession game. Dawes back to work. Jemison down low. Too strong with a hook. It's not Jemison's game. It's going at the rim where he can convert. Fading away. He's not a finesse skill guy like that. Here's Lawson. Had the early dunk. Gets the bounce here. 14-9. Just got to think. Attack the rim. Challenge Clemson to keep guys in front. Can they do that? They haven't shown consistently that they can. Crown still filing in. Sams are over for both sides as Clemson turns it over. They're eighth so far in our first half. Well, you love the three-point shooting on both sides. Everybody loves the three-point shooting. Amir Sims got him going early. I thought Clemson was going to get hot there. They have gone cold. South Carolina, not a heavy reliance on the three-point shot. Best doing damage inside the arc. Must give credit, though, to South Carolina defensively. They have not allowed these guards to blow by them off the bounce. Too strong for Lawson. Gamecocks now 6 of 12 from the floor. Dawes probing. Halfway through our first half, Dawes to Sims. Dropped a nice time there, Jordan. It's a big time play from Dawes. A freshman learning how to play the position with Clyde Trapp out with the ACL. Much has been asked of him. Fantastic play distributed. Gamecocks turn it over. That'll be their seventh. Yeah, at this point last week, Brad Brunel was down to just eight scholarship players. He gets Chase Hunter back today. That gives him nine. They're expecting Clyde Trapp 
who was supposed to be the starting point guard for this team this season, could be returning maybe in as soon as 7 to 10 days, right after Christmas. Dawes left open with a clear path. Made that harder than it had to be. And Sims missed the chippy. There's a lot of contact with Dawes going to the rim. No whistle. Hannibal couldn't spin it home. Tyson the board. Well, this game kind of starting to grind its way through this first half. Here's a steal. Look out for Lawson. That is a freshman mistake on full display. Dawes with that much space telegraphs the pass. The length at 6-6 of Lawson, the defensive anticipation. Defense to offense on the other end. And that's the area Frank Martin wants to see improvement from his super sophomore, A.J. Lawson, on the defensive end. Great anticipation that time. Hannibal comes up with another steal. And here's Bryant. And this is where Dawes got exposed versus Florida State. 18 turnovers for the team. Six of them coming from him in that blowout loss. Two consecutive turnovers there. He's got to be better with the basketball. Gamecocks dominant in the paint thus far. Seven to shoot. And Lawson gives it up. This is just poor offensive guard play. Throwing a cross court easy steal for Lawson with his length and athleticism. That translates to two on the other end. But the telegraphing of the pass from Dawes. Dribble a little bit closer to the receiver. Make a strong, crisp pass. If it's not there, reverse, go the other way with it. Is that inexperience, just being of a course. freshman? Without question, it's inexperience. And Sims commits the offensive foul. That'll be his first. But going back to it, Roy, Dawes isn't supposed to be logging this many minutes at the point guard position. Coach Brunell's put in a really tough spot because Clyde Trapp tears his ACL where you have depth and a reliance on a trap. He ain't there right now. He's coming back after the new year. That will resolve itself in that role. I mean, you say that at the same time, it's an ACL, so it's going to take him some extra time to just feel himself mentally, if anything else. Open luck from the corner. And Manaya's off the mark. Clemson's got to run. They're not doing it in the half court. they got to run. I know they don't traditionally play fast. They have to this evening. And beat the defense down the floor. Dawes off the pump fake. Tyson can't connect. Here comes Carolina. Tyson trying to get cute with it. Grab that thing with two hands. Power up. Draw the foul. Earn a whistle. And the alley-oop's going to be picked off by Newman. Mack left open. That's a shot he's got to make, and he does. Let me tell you, you could hear Tevin Mack in any corner of the gymnasium demanding the basketball. A confident guy, a scorer with the green lights. Let me fix things here. Mack starts this one one of six from the floor. The response on the other side by A.J. Lawson. And Lawson's on a roll. He's got nine. Yeah, I like Lawson. Lawson wants the basketball in those turbulent times. He's a go-to guy for Carolina, a team that struggles at times offensively. Out of bounds. Back to the Gamecocks. 19-14, to 14, Carolina on the road, 13 minutes in, and Tevin Mack, his first made field goal. Tigers need more of that. He grew up in the backyard. Of course he wants to beat Carolina. Are you kidding me? Welcome back to Little John Coliseum. Don't forget, coming up Wednesday, right here on ESPN2, Cole Anthony, North Carolina, taking on the Zags out west in Spokane. That's 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Then John Calipari, number 8, UK, square off against Utah at T-Mobile Arena out in Vegas. That's at 11 o'clock Eastern right here on ESPN2. Wildcats have won the last eight with the Utes, dating back to 1993. Great week of basketball upcoming. Jordan Cornett, Roy Philpott back in upstate South Carolina. Gamecocks on the road, lead it by five. South Carolina elects to go with their best player to handle the basketball, to control and limit these turnovers. He's their playmaker. Also may have gotten away with a travel, no whistle. Here's a steal. Sloppy effort on both sides in terms of turnovers. Clemson, Jordan has turned it over 11 times so far. 
Who is going to value the basketball? That will determine the outcome in this one. Lazy passes, failure to give your team an opportunity in a half-court setting. Inexcusable. Kuznar just picked up his second. Check that, A.J. Lawson. That'll be his first. And it's part of that, both coming off exam week, so you've been off for about seven days. You're trying to shake off a little bit of rust, so there's been a lot of film study. You've been trying to ace that uh, last this, exam, right? No, no, no. This is the easy time. You're not in class now. Oh, okay. Now, this is the time you're only focused on basketball. You should be your most sharp, Roy. Sims, the basket, and a chance for three. And Kusnard will pick up his second there. But, I mean, you get the sense one ten or 12 nothing run could be the difference today. Yeah, and I asked the question, and it is the theme right now. Taking care of the basketball, good execution. Nice screen from Newman to allow some space for Sims to catch and finish at the rim. Too many turnovers. Very sloppy, both teams right now. You know, South Carolina has success in the half court. They're turning it over. Clemson, living and dying by the three, have hit enough to stay in it. But they, too, got to take care of the basketball. Sims has eight. Lead is back to two. Jair Bolden back on the floor. Got to get Coach R a touchdown wall. Got to keep him interested. Where's he been? Post entries have been poor. There's been turnovers simply delivering it. Bolden's not even looking. There you go. He heard you that time. Coach R goes to work. Well short. Triple team. Manaya inside right before the buzzer, I believe. We're going to take a look at that one, I believe. Teddy Valentine will strut over to the scorer's table and see if he got that one off in time. Did not hit any rim. I did not see a red light, and it's hard to see the clock there. So he's looking around, and I is saying, hey, I don't see any violation tiptoeing back. We'll take a look here. Hard to tell from the replay there, but I did not see a red light ever going. Does not draw iron. Should not reset. Uh, I think he might have been holding on to it just a tick too long. It's got to be indisputable video evidence, of course. You buying that there? Wave off the bucket? You know, that's why I'm happy I'm not official. I need one more look, <laughs> but to me, the naked eye off of that replay, it felt like Manaya still had the ball in his hands. I would overturn it in that case. Okay, here we go. We see the poor shot again from Kozar. Ball still in his hands. I think it was, oh, that's tough. I think it was still in his hands. I don't know if you have enough evidence to overturn. They do. Teddy Valentine. Gives us the final word. You know what I like? Teddy V made that decision and kept it moving. Jay Billis is somewhere smiling on his couch. Jay, they're looking out for you here. We're playing basketball. Hey, we got full court pressure. And Clemson's going to call a timeout as a result. That's smart. That's a very, very smart move from Coach Martin. Throw that pressure on Dawes and confuse it. Brilliant move from Coach Martin. It's a chess match in the rivalry game here, Roy. A.J. Lawson, nine points, three rebounds. An emphatic slam to get things started for South Carolina on the road. And if you're just tuning in, Jordan Cornette confirms to us he's got a chance to be a first-round pick at the next level. I like his ability at the next level. I do believe he's a first-round talent at 6'6". He defends, can score at all three levels, and is an unselfish player and coachable. Checks all the boxes. Newman, the pump fake, draws the contact. And Manaya picks up the personal. That'll be his first. I like that decision-making from Newman. Saw the three-point shot, but saw an opportunity for a better one. And draws a foul. Fifteen foul in South Carolina. This one's going to be picked off by Lawson. His second steal. Brian Carouse puts it up and in. A strong athletic finish for number 24. Lawson understanding that Brian is the best receiver on the floor. Throw it up, go get it. The elite athlete does exactly that. 
I think a lot of South Carolina fans down in Columbia wondering about this six and four start for the Gamecocks. You got to remember, Bryant's only played in two games this year. The schedule's been fairly tough. Played teams like Wichita State and Houston. He wasn't really healthy. Now that he's gaining strength, that makes a big difference as conference play arrives. Foul inside will go against Hannibal. Interesting move there from Coach Martin, switching defense, going with the 2-3 zone there. And again, Newman aggressive in that extended short corner, catches at the baseline and drives it, forcing the officials to make a decision because of his aggressive movement downhill at the rim. First points for John Newman, cousin of the former New York Knickerbocker, Johnny Newman, from back in the day. You remember Johnny Newman? I remember Newman. Hello, Newman. <laughs> you going Seinfeld on me? I'm trying to tee you up on the Knicks. I'm like, hey, who wants to talk about the Knicks right now? Are you kidding me? <laughs> talk about Seinfeld any day of the week. Timeout called by Carolina. Had trouble the inbounds pass. Frank Martin didn't like that sequence. Johnny Newman, longtime New York Knickerbocker, 17 years to the next level. Played his collegiate basketball at Richmond. Well, that makes me feel old. It seems like just yesterday he was banging around at MSG. Yeah, that man can play. My pops grew up watching him. That, that guy can play. Johnny can play. Johnny out here. John Newman the third. First and second clearly had game. The third is doing a good job manning that position at the baseline and being in attack mode. I mean, the Knicks were decent with Newman. Late 80s, you know, when Ewing got there, they really had their calling card with defense, and Newman could kind of score a little bit, right? Yeah, and then James Dolan decided he was going to run the show. Let's <laughs> just call it what it is, right, Roy? <laughs> We're talking ball here, aren't we? Yeah, we are. <laughs> Indeed. Newman scoring up this season. Only had one start last year for Clemson. Right at 10 points per contest this year. I want to see Lawson take over this game. Best player on the floor. I want to see him take over. All SEC freshman team performer last year was A.J. Lawson. Hannibal spots him open from the wing. Big shot from downtown. He's got 12. What a great play from Hannibal to allow Lawson to look. Sucks in that defense. I don't know how he had the eyes to reverse that thing. Lawson catch and release. Gamecocks back in their zone. Got to have somebody pop in the middle there as a receiver. Right at the ACC logo. Got to get a touch there. Tevin Mack is available. Got to demand it. Sims launches from the corner. He's been having that hot hand the last couple of ball games. 11 points so far today. And Sims a couple of three balls. Lawson too strong this time. Finally tracked down by Sims, and he was fouled. Back and forth we go in a two-point game. And the three-point line, Lawson gets the feet set, catches, double zero, connects for three. How about a good old-fashioned clap back in a rivalry game? Amir Sims, he's versatile. The big guys, they shoot that thing too. Kevin, it's kind of got that ugly sweatery feel to it so far. I actually think those guys managed to make ugly sweaters attractive. I mean, <laughs> Coach Greenberg is at his peak with his look. He's in great shape. Lafonso's clearly a legend. Those guys managed to make those sweaters work. I don't know how they did it. And KC, I mean, he's the point guard that makes the whole thing go. Yes, he is. One point game back at Little John Coliseum. They're Two talking, old rivals. They're talking about ugly basketball. What about your sweater? Come on. <laughs> that pass sailed out of bounds. And they're going to call a blocking foul. Leap Sims hit the deck. That'll save the possession for the Gamecocks. That'll be his second personal, Jordan. Sims doing what he can to try and create a turnover there. And ends up getting the block celebrating at first on the ground thought he did the job got the drive to me it cuts out but that was he was in position that he was, was out of the circle too there that was a charge or at the very least a no call and then the ball skies out of bounds Brabard now has to put him on the bench with two personals 
Doug Shouse with the call there, and Frank Martin was exchanging pleasantries with him during that last time out. Coats are an air ball, and a foul over the back against the Gamecocks. That'll be Nelson's, his second. Chase Hunter really worked to contest on that shot from Coach Song. Coming off the bench, trying to give this team a lift. A guy who has been out of rhythm, has missed four games with a foot injury, trying to do the little things, and that can be the difference in a rivalry game. Simply effort. Tigers in the bonus. That'll put Dawes at the stripe. 63% this season, and a chance for Clemson to regain the lead for the first time since it was 6 to 5. What did Fon say? Turnover? Is that how he described this, this first half? Yeah, I mean, they called it correctly, except in the last few minutes, there has been some stability in terms of value in the basketball, which has allowed some guys to make some shots. And finally, a little energy inside a little John Coliseum. Dawes has eight. Here's Bryant. Sweet crossover, Hannibal. Short, Jamison the rebound. It'll stay on this end. And don't forget, coming up Saturday on ESPN, also the ESPN app, we'll have the first game of the ninth annual Crossroads Classic, Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indy. Hoosiers square off against Notre Dame at noon Easter, 11 Central. If you've forgotten that four Indiana men's teams all rotate matchups in the Crossroads Classics. Indiana, Notre Dame, Butler, and Purdue all rotating around. That'll be fun. Yeah, those have become rivalries in, in the state of Indiana identifying. Let's get four of our most dominant teams and play every year. Generate some interest right there in the backyard. I love it. More regions need to take those cues. Stop and pop for Dawes. Jemison skies for the rebound. A lot of contact. There's a whistle and a foul against Carolina. That'll be Nelson's third. The big fella getting rugged. Jemison, be a star in your role. Shot goes up. Hey, you don't need to be the guy making threes. When you're built like that, go get the ball. Tell everybody else, get the heck out of the way. Watch those elbows, though. Watch those elbows. You don't want to see chippiness, but in a rivalry game, you kind of do, don't you? Speak for yourself, Roy. I okay. love the chippiness. Thank Are you. you. Me? Thank you. I'm over here safely sitting next to you. I don't have to worry about any of the toughness. No elbows coming our way. Not yet at least. One more for Jamison, the true seven-footer out of Birmingham, Alabama. He's, Just, got, he's got to get in better shape. Jamison? Yeah, he's out of shape. I mean, look at that guy. Are Come on. Kidding? Are you kidding me? Come on. That is what every strength coach shows off on their, on their cover letter if they're looking for a job. Look what I did to this guy. I mean, he is put together. Lane violation for Jonathan Bear. Lead stays at two. Clemson in the midst of a 7 nothing run. Can't have it. Can't have it. Yeah, I mean, we didn't come out here to watch a pillow fight between these two teams. We want to see a little action at some point. Pressure results in a turnover. Oh, no, no, no. That's the wrong call. That was deflected. That's the wrong call. Yeah, we had the bird's eye view. I would agree with you. Yeah, that ball was deflected. We had a fun conversation with Frank Martin this morning, didn't we? You feel better about life after talking to him. He's <laughs> such a great guy. Intriguing was. Here's the steal. Hannibal off to the races. With authority! Okay. Hannibal has given this team a boost. He's made some winning plays to keep this one tight. When you're looking for steady guard play, he's delivered here down the stretch for South Carolina. Four points, three boards for number 12 in Garnet. Newman attacking. Rejected. And the held possession. It'll stay on this end. Give me the ups here for Trey Hannibal. Extra step on that man's ladder. You can't teach that. <laughs> and he knows how to find the one shot. His ISO can. <laughs> guy's ready for the next stage. Maybe the next Jordan Cornell. <laughs> Bear lost his balance. Travels. Turns it over. And you're seeing uh, on full display, Bear, who just hasn't played a lot of basketball, coming off the ACL injury, struggling to find his groove, a little bit erratic. Second time he's hit the deck. I mean, at his size, I mean, he's 6'10". And in a lot of ways, it's like playing on one leg. You got that thick brace on. You're trying to understand how to move again. Clemson, 16 first-half turnovers. They're high this season in a game. 
18. So that's been an issue as they now move to a zone defense. Coming off 19 turnovers in that loss versus Florida State where he lost by 19. They have not figured that side out yet. They need Clyde Trap back. It'll stay on this side, 10 to shoot. 136 remaining in our first half. I mean, honestly, this has been about what we expected. Two physical teams, defense-oriented. Rivalry game. Lower scoring. Crazy thing is, South Carolina, they can get shots that are shooting a good percentage. They just got to take care of it. Clemson's all kinds of out of sorts. Coach Sar, Jamison both hit the deck. And the held ball, it'll stay on this end. Nope. Now Frank Martin will clarify here with Doug Schaus. Well, these two have gotten pretty close in the first half. <laughs> South Carolina basketball, 20 to shoot. You got to find a way to get it back to Lawson here. Clemson showing a 2-3 zone. Got to be aggressive. Got to try and penetrate or find that receiver down on a low block, short corner, or high post. Carolina settle. South Carolina settle. Gamecocks with 14 turnovers. Tied at 26. Had been pretty at times. Yeah, you, now you're seeing because these teams are so out of sorts taking care of the basketball, now the coaches are just switching defenses to further confuse these guards on both sides. Dawes off the high ball screen. Hunter launches. Under a minute to play. Shot clock did not reset. Nine to shoot. And here's Hunter. Outside to Dawes. Lawson claims the board. About a 10-second differential between the game and shot clocks. Frank inside connects and a pretty dime dropped again by Hannibal. Hannibal's ability to carve up the defense. Clemson's guards have struggled all season long, keeping perimeter players in front. Coach Martin was calling for somebody who could break down a defense. Hannibal has done that in his first stance. Shot clock off. Two-point lead for the Gamecocks. Dawes. Bryant. We showed you the athleticism again there on the ops. It's back to Carolina. And it's just not managing. Dawes is a freshman. It's not a turnover, but it's a poor shot. It's a poor decision, and it costs you. Now Lawson's just going to try and make something happen here in the waning seconds. And that'll do it. A turnover-filled first half. 28-26. to 26. South Carolina with a lead on the road. More ugly sweaters headed your way right now. The halftime report. KC, Seth, and Fonz. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Back inside Little John Coliseum, the start of our second half. South Carolina on the road leading arch rival Clemson, 28-26. to Great to have you with us courtside. Jordan Cornette, Roy Philpott. Really wasn't all that pretty in our first 20 minutes. 30 turnovers, 3-0, 30 turnovers. What needs to change the second half? They just got to be better, stronger with the basketball. You heard Coach Greenberg talk about it in one of the breaks, and I'll reinforce that. Receivers coming to the ball. I mean, that's been a lot of these live ball turnovers. And then on the flip side, with 30 turnovers combined in this first half, where's the transition execution? Shouldn't there be easy baskets on the other end? I have seen none of that. If the turnover's going to happen, somebody needs to take advantage of them going the other way. All I want for Christmas, a clean second half here in Clemson, South Carolina. You and me both, but rest assured, Roy, we're going to have a close finish. It's a two-point game. Second stanza, these two teams are blessed with great coaches on both sides. They'll make adjustments. It's up to these players to handle those assignments and get it done and execute. Critical matchup for both sides in search of that resume-building win in non-conference play. Clemson had a come-from-behind victory against TCU a couple of weeks back. South Carolina getting ready to enter SEC play. A win today would go a long ways as they have a road trip to Virginia coming up in less than a week. 
Foul be called on Keyshawn Bryant. That's his first. If Dawes delivers that cleanly to Sims, that's maybe a three out of the gates to get this offense going. Clemson has five threes here in the first half. They need to hit double-figure threes to come out of here with a win on their home floor. That is going to be a stat that is paramount. Tyson baseline. The spin lost the handle. Bryant tracks it down and a foul against Hunter Tyson. Sublime defensive effort from Bryant who's back in the lineup providing a intense defender, an elite athlete, and he makes a play here in the first 30 seconds in the second half. Hotsar's been held in check so far. Elbow jumper here, and right on cue, off the mark. Rebound ripped away by Tyson. He's going to be whistled for the infraction. That'll be his second. Another strong sequence from Brian. He forces the turnover on the other end. Active on the glass. Trying to create a second chance opportunity. Just hustle. All right, so you're Frank Martin in the locker room at halftime. What are you telling your guys? I'm telling them they got to do a better job keeping guys in front defensively. you got to defend the three-point line. And for heaven's sake, take care of the basketball. <laughs> Lawson. Runner off the mark, and if you're Brad Brownell, you mentioned you want to see them get to 10 threes made in this game. What else is he saying? I think they want to play a little bit fast, and I know that's not typical of Coach Brownell, but they have the opportunity to get some early and easy offense. Three-pointer number six. That gives Clemson the lead back, and Dawes has 11. Three, number six for Clemson. A team that gets 37% of their offensive production from beyond the arc. Bryant attacking. Contact and free throws upcoming. No question that Dawes needs to be better with the basketball, but he is a skilled player, and if you're not going to respect him from three, he is not hesitant. Amnesia forgets the last miss, pursues the next make. Foul went against Amir Sims. That's his third. That's going to force Brad Brownell to go back to his bench, bring in Trey Jemison. Bryant at the stripe, just three of five this season, make it four of six. Now, Jemison does not have the offensive tools that Sims brings to this Tigers team, but he's incredibly physical, and that is absolutely needed in his second half versus South Carolina. Tied at 29. Bryant, keep us right there. Manaya tracks down the board. Great hustle for number 10 in Garnet. Newman and Manaya. Tripped up. Foul go against number 10. It'll be his second. Make that his third. There will be no casual rebounds this third. evening in Tiger Town. Jonathan Bear checks back in. This game in search of a rhythm to start our second half. I mean, you've seen other games like this this year, and part of that. The extended three-point arc, part of that is something else? Part of it is also teams finding a rhythm. So much turnover in college basketball uh, in both of these conferences, the SEC as well as the ACC. And these teams are learning how to play together. Coaches are learning their rotation. It's a growing period for everyone involved. Kusnar just picked up his third. Manaya also with three. So the fouls mounting up on both sides. Ten to shoot. Bear travel. Turnover number 17. Bear is going to be a great contributor for Clemson. Clemson fans are going to have to be patient. Guys have played basketball in, what, 18 months? I mean, it's such a long time since he's been competitively out there on the floor. And that is without a doubt having an impact on his rhythm and his ability to adjust. Just a second game back after tearing his ACL. Kotsar was fouled from behind. And Jemison picks up the person. Tied at 29. Alley up for Bryant, swatted away by Jemison, and this place was about ready to explode one way or another. 
55 will pick up the personal. I almost rocked all the way out of my chair, slow developing, but you saw it coming. Bryant, if not for the sturdy Jamison, who almost looked like that was, you could argue, clean. He met him at the apex of elevation. I thought that was a fair denial. I'm with the booze. I think, but, but here's what it is. Bryant catches that thing so determined, so aggressive. The officials go, well, that's got to be a foul, right? And, and that's credit to the aggressive play of Bryant this entire second half out of the gates. I think you and I were both about two inches off of our seat thinking something's getting ready to happen here. And it could have been Jamison with a clean block. Instead, Bryant, one more free throw. South Carolina back in front by two. I mean, make no mistake about it, Bryant is the best athlete on the floor. And that's why Coach Smart was so excited to get him back. He provides depth. He can defend a lot of different positions on the floor. But he's also in attack mode and provides that edge, something the squad so desperately needs. Newman. Jamison open. Blocking foul against Kozar. That's his first. Trey Hannibal will check back in for South Carolina. Gamecocks already with four team fouls to start our second half. Clemson, a team that struggled to keep guards in front. Keep an eye on Hannibal for South Carolina. His ability to carve up the defense and get his feet into the paint. Bear from downtown can't connect. Chance now for the Gamecocks to extend their advantage. Lawson will do exactly that high off the glass. You gotta see more of that. The best player on the floor, a future first round draft pick. I need to see the dog. I need to see the desire. He can score at will. Needs to be more aggressive here in the second stanza. Foul against Lawson here. Frank Martin told us Lawson picks up his second. AJ's learning to be the guy. And that's on both ends of the floor. Defensively, it's got to be there. On offense, he's giving you better production this year, but there's still a lot of work to do. It's a fine line when you're recruiting. You want good guys, but you also want guys who are going to be tough and aggressive for 40 minutes in a contest. And this is a mild manner, really good young man. Comes from a really good family, and sometimes you just want him to be a little bit of a jerk on the floor, and that's tough for a good young man, but he's incredibly talented, and that comes by simply being around a guy like Coach Frank Martin, who's a great guy that has the edge as well. Justin Benaya just picked up his fourth personal as Kayvon Moore checks in. 11 fouls so far between these two sides in our second half. And Jordan, just two field goals. I thought there's seven minutes left in the second half. We got 17 left. <laughs> it's moving slow here. A lot of whistles. Seen a lot of Teddy Valentine so far. Which tells you one thing. It might come down to free throws here. I like this. Aggressive in the open floor. Lawson out of control and an offensive foul. Well, he just put his head down that time. I'm not sure he knew where he was going. Toss it up towards the rim. That'll be his third foul. Jimison may not score in this game, but Jimison is going to be a star in his role. Simply standing there, great defensive anticipation, offers his body up to the basketball gods, and Lawson will take a seat. Trey Jemison, star in his role. Do the little things. Earn yourself some minutes, especially with Sims on the bench at foul trouble. Newman. Outstanding defense by Carolina. See, now you got me thinking about Seinfeld every time Newman touches the <laughs> basketball. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Bryant. I mean, there is some good defense being played out there. Certainly you would concede that. Yeah, it's been good position defense. Help side has been omnipresent here, especially in the second half. South Carolina making a concerted effort to run more so than usual, especially off these misses. Try and find something early and easy. Gamecocks 5-4. Clemson shooting just 26% so far. 
Bolden. A step back. Jay. All net. Silky smooth. Jair Bolden. And the George Washington transfer gives South Carolina a six-point advantage. Tigers call a timeout. 35-29 here in Clemson. Don't forget, college basketball doubleheader headed your way Wednesday, starting first, 9 o'clock. Spokane, Washington, Gonzaga, and North Carolina in a top-20 clash. Zags off an impressive road win last night against Arizona. Then later, 11 o'clock Eastern, Utah and Kentucky. The Utes and the Wildcats right here on ESPN2, the Neon Hoops Showcase. We get you set for more college basketball later this week. Jordan Cornette, Roy Philpott back in Clemson, South Carolina. Gamecocks leading the Tigers on the road 35-29. And, and you're coming off bold knocking down a shot, so maybe that builds some confidence for a guy that found himself on the bench because of a lackluster start. And as I look at the Gamecocks, you look at how you're going to try to generate offense. This is a South Carolina team that needs to look to Mike Kozar down low in the post. Sims is in foul trouble. Challenge him to guard you in foul trouble. And then when Jemison comes in, that's a sophomore big that's not used to big minutes. See if his fatigue will catch up with him. Kozar could be the difference offensively for South Carolina to build. Kozar's been held in check thus far. By the way, that last time out, Trey Hannibal was being looked at as we went to break by the South Carolina trainers. Here's Kayvon Moore, the transfer from Texas Tech, rejected by Bryant. Boy, he came out of nowhere to swat that one away, and a foul against Clemson. No question, South Carolina is ecstatic to have Bryant back. The elevation. That shot goes over any other defender in college basketball. And again, I think you point out, hey, he missed basically the start of the season. He's only played in two games, his third today. This is his first start. It's a missing component of this program that Frank Martin has desperately needed this year. He's back and he's making a difference today. Frank inside. Strong finish. Call for Kozar. Frank will do the trick. High-low basketball, something Coach Martin likes to flex his muscle with. Able to execute it there. That needs to be the path, the avenue for the Gamecocks here down the stretch. Gamecocks with their largest lead. Tigers in desperate need of a bucket here. Hunter off the mark. Sims back in with three personals. With the bounces, Newman and a chance for three. That fight on the offensive glass, the third offensive rebound for Sims. He understands he's a leader on this team. And then cutting without the basketball, forgotten art, Newman. Like all great finishers, keeps his eye on the goal despite the contact. Old-fashioned three-point play opportunity. Clemson really needed that when Newman's got four points. Lead is six. Go right back down low. Establish Kozar high-low basketball. Combination of Frink and Kozar. 2-3 zone. Receiver at the mid post. Carve this thing up. But you got to be aggressive offensive. This one swatted away. It'll stay on this end. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Wait, Jordan, you can feel it in this arena. Clemson's just in need of some kind of spark because right now it's all South Carolina. Start our second half. Four to shoot. DJ Moss checking in. He launches. Top of the key. It's an air ball. Oxygen. Good defensive chess move there from Coach Brunell. To show that 2-3. Without Lawson on the floor. No go-to guy to establish. Where does the offense come from? Sims is back on the floor with the three fouls. But in your estimation, what should they be trying to do here? Well, I get it. Tevin Mack is 1-6 from the floor. But Tevin Mack was brought in here to this program to deliver baskets. On cue from the corner. And you almost wonder if he's pushing. A guy who grew up in Columbia, understands this rivalry as great as anybody, has a lot of family here and wants to show out, may be pressing. Yeah, his mom Paula in attendance, his older brother Jermaine Washington here as well. Started Nevada when the Wolfpack made a run to the Sweet 16. 
And an offensive foul. Mack, the guilty party. That's his first. Haven't said his name much. Last two plays down, we've said it for negative reasons, a miss and then a turnover. Trying to force things. Had a great conversation with him earlier today. An impressive young man, mature beyond his years, and said, hey, Coach Brunell had great faith in me. I wanted to come back this way. He told me I wouldn't have to look over my shoulder and I could just be a scorer. That's who I am. That's what I'm wired to be. Just can't seem to get it going here. That's a guy that Clemson looks to to get them going and get them rolling. Held in check thus far. Bryant launches from deep. And tracked down by Dawes. Off the bounce. Lost the handle. The steal by Bolden. That's where Dawes kills you. Just a young guard learning the position. Thrown to the fire because Clyde Trapp is out with an ACL. Those mistakes trailing by six. They crush you. Bolden left open. In and out, and Sims claims a rebound aggressively. Crowd in it for maybe the second time this afternoon and now into the evening. Dawes left open. They're going to give him that one. And that's why. Coach Sar. Sims can't have that foul. That's going to be his fourth. Sims cannot have that one. I understand being aggressive on the backboard in the fight. she got to understand they need you out there on the floor. There's a ton of game left. They're going to have to go back to Jemison, a guy who doesn't provide offense. And they severely need it. Sims and his 12 points. Try to make his case to Coach Brad Brownell to no avail. Both teams down the bonus. Coach Sart to strike. Coach Sart just two points, one of four from the court. Make that three and he'll get the bonus. Well, you can feel this, Jordan, a pivotal moment in this game right now. South Carolina leading by seven. And in a low-scoring game like this, now seven-point advantage. Feels like a lot more than that. You're three possessions, three stops away from a lead. So Clemson within striking distance. They got to get something going offensively. And unfortunately, Jemison down low as a low-post option is not a viable one. Eight minutes into our second half, another steal for Bolden. Another Dawes turnover. Tigers get it back. Newman left open from the wing. And Bolden again, he's been active in this second half, tracks it down. Kotsar left wide open inside. Puts it up and in, a strong finish. And the Gamecocks now extending their lead to nine for the first time. Kotsar may have shuffled his feet. Before gathering and finishing. Brad Brownell will utilize a timeout. The lead is nine for Carolina on the road. Strong start for the Gamecocks. South Carolina head coach Frank Martin in search of his first career victory here at Little John Coliseum. His team with a great opportunity leading Clemson on the road by nine. Jordan Cornette, Roy Philpott here at Little John Coliseum. Score tells a story. It's been ugly at times. The defense has been rock solid. And South Carolina so far has been just a bit better on the offensive end of the floor. And if you're Clemson, you got to put it in the rear view. you got to forget that you've only generated 31 points in 29 minutes of basketball. And you have to find a way here. Dawes has to be better with the basketball to give his team an opportunity. I look to Newman with this lineup to provide that offense. Going to be a shot maker or generate something driving to the rim. Clemson just 2 of 11 from the floor to start this second half. Curry and Scott checks in the transfer from Tulsa. Not a lot of offensive firepower on the floor for this Clemson team. And here's Hunter. Two seconds to shoot. Sloppy possession. The desperation he for Newman is good. This is going to be close. You ask for Newman to give you something. It's not how it was drawn up by any means. But was it in time? You called it correctly in the first half. Hard to see from that angle. This will be immediate timeout. Timeout on the floor for now. The lead is six for the Gamecocks. Wave off the basket, zero on the shot clock. The ball still 
in John Newman's hands. Right there in that last frame, you can see it. Jordan Cornette, Roy Philpott. So instead of a six-point game, it's a nine-point contest. South Carolina basketball. That's a big sequence in a low-scoring affair like this. But it's not like it was a well-executed play that was taken away from Clemson. It was a scramble. It was chaotic. They were lucky to even be in that position. They have to find a way to get something good. And it's Newman as your best option on the floor. Run him off some screens. Jemison is on the floor. He's a towering figure. Make him a screener to get a shooter a look. Well, you got to like the full court pressure here to try to change up the tempo, Jordan. Got to speed it up. South Carolina tries to respond. Bolden off the mark. And a foul. They've called against the Tigers. And that'll be Curran Scott's first. That's his first. This is where Clemson could be in danger. South Carolina potentially could flex their muscle here on the backboard and make this very difficult for a comeback. They have the advantage there. Clemson has competed on that front. Only minus four to rebound margin. South Carolina does what they're supposed to. This could take them home. Frank shooting right at 50% this season at the stripe. He'll get one more. Gamecocks double bonus moving forward. See if those percentages bear out from chair to stripe. What was your major at Notre Dame? I was not a math major. Okay. Just wondering. <laughs> Gamecocks with their largest advantage. So we've got stats and researchers for it. <laughs> and Gamecocks in the midst of a 14-2 run to build this 11-point lead. Tigers more than four minutes since their last field goal. That'll change there with Dawes. It's a big-time play from Dawes. Clemson is hoping to get to this under eight with a reasonable score. As you see Dawes with a good decision there, avoiding a turnover, finishing a play. They need to get Sims back in the game. But he's in that foul trouble with four. So they're going to try to keep this thing as close as possible. Although it's starting to get away from him, you might have to throw it out the door and say, Amir, go out there and play. We, we need you offensively. Tigers back in that 2-3 zone. Approaching the halfway point of our second half. Break! The baseline J is silky smooth. The depth of South Carolina has come to the forefront. Frank making a play from the short corner in his own. Dawes outside to Scott. That's his spot. He makes him pay. Scott, 44-36. Under 10 to play. Again showing zone. Frank could be the guy on that short corner. Got to get him a touch. It collapses the defense. You tell me he's the zone buster in this he's thing? He's the zone buster. That short corner area collapses the defense. The world is yours, as does the high post where Brian is currently standing. That's where the zone is most vulnerable. Hunter tripped up. May have been fouled from behind. And he was. Keyshawn Bryant, the guilty party. That's his second. Keyshawn Bryant, his second. Clemson, the double bonus after this sequence. And Hunter at the strike, coming back from that foot injury. He's missed the last couple of weeks. Well, it just feels like every shot, every free throw attempt means a ton in a game like this. He'll get one more. I mean, Roy, you make this. It's a two-possession game. You kidding me? How's that for your math, brother? I need to subtract the carry the two. And I think I got that. Yeah, you were on your iPhone right there <laughs> using the calculator. A couple of free throws for Hunter. 44-38. Keep in mind, South Carolina does not have a true point guard. This is where they're vulnerable as well. If you're Clemson, you're thinking, let's get a couple turnovers here. Make this thing really interesting. Two-possession game. Carolina slow to set up the offense on this possession. And against this zone, you need shot makers beyond the arc. South Carolina doesn't truly have them. Five on the shot clock. Bolden launches and count it. Big shot for South Carolina. He's got five. Bolden telling me over here, turn his mic off. We've got shot makers. Bolden the hero right there. 
Redshirt Jr. out of Brooklyn. Back iron for Dawes. Totesar the rebound. Ahead to Lawson. Well, just sometimes the simple pass in a game like this becomes difficult. Lawson left open. Big bucket for Carolina. Lawson with 17. Lawson sitting on the bench for an extended amount of time. Unafraid, pulls the trigger and connects. Big shot for the Gamecocks. So the Tigers cut it to six, then back-to-back -back triples. One by Bolden, the other by Lawson. Scott now has five. It's a ten-point game. Dangerous pass. Coach Sar, look out. Contact and a blocking foul. Third on Jamison. This was a desperation, but Bolt gets his feet set, shoots 40% from three. Cool customer. And then you get back your star. You get back Lawson back in this game. Doesn't need a rhythm shot. All he needs is a little bit of daylight, and he makes you pay. Hannibal slow to get up. He was banged up. Looks like it's a cramp, leg cramp there. Training staff looked at him a few minutes ago, Jordan. We need help to get off the floor. Cramp it up. That's a bad feeling. Oh. You never have cramps. It's kind of hard to explain, but when you get them, it feels like the muscle's ripping right off the bone. It's excruciating. A moment in time, though, hopefully. And Dawes head over to the Clemson bench. You have some blood on him. And so it's been more physical in this second half. We're kind of seeing it on both sides. Team trainers, team doctors understand this is where they're going to get to call up. They're going to get some camera time in the rivalry games. It's a little bit more physical in these matchups. Mentioned South Carolina's schedule. Frank Martin compared it to being a football coach to us earlier today. Three consecutive Sundays with games and basically off in between all of those contests. Virginia, that'll be an ABC contest uh, next weekend on December 22nd. And then SEC play starts. At, at, worth mentioning, I think Coach Martin might be a little bit deflated, not because his team's not handling business. They are up 10. But he wanted to get some face time with Coach Dabo Sweeney. He's a big fan. So let me set the scene for you there. We were hoping to get Coach Sweeney on the air with us. Reached out to him before the game. He said he's got his big Christmas party night, so he can't make it. But had he arrived here. I think it's great you have him in the Rolodex. Well, he was going to come on, hopefully, with us. And then Frank Martin told us, if you get Dabo on, I'm coming on with him. I don't care when it happens. And that would have been gold, Jerry, gold. Have the dump button ready. <laughs> to see Frank Martin interview Dabo Sweeney in a Clemson Carolina basketball game. Let's go with that. One of my favorite guys to talk to in my college basketball career, without a doubt, has been Coach Frank Martin. And on the other side, Coach Brad Brunell, just a class act. Frank picks up the personal, Sims to the stripe. When we come back, the lead is 11 for South Carolina. The gold medal for the uh, World University Games is an incredibly rewarding experience. I tease Dabo Sweeney that uh, he's a two-time national champ, but uh, I'm a world champ, so I, I've got one up on that at least. He's got to go international for him to, uh, to battle with us. It certainly was a big deal in these parts as Clemson claimed the goal over in Italy this past summer at the World University Games. A couple of thrilling come-from-behind wins for head coach Brad Brunell and his Clemson Tigers. Did it with a couple of injuries in tow as well. We mentioned Fly Trap and Jonathan Bear. They've been banked up. Bear's back in the lineup. Fly Trap expected to return in 10 days. And of course, he's teasing Coach Sweeney about he's got the goal. Dabo does it, but Dabo's got a chance to win another national championship later this year. That semifinal coming up quick against the Buckeyes out west. A fifth straight college football playoff, and somehow Dabo managed to approach this. Because guys have a chip on their shoulder and have to prove themselves. How, how does that work? How does that work? I have no idea. But they're my team. They're my pick to click. Back to live action. South Carolina leading by 11 on the road. Lawson try to make it 14. Bear skies for the board. Got to go. 
I mean, I'm going to ask you the question again, and I hate to beat a dead horse, but where's the offense going to come from? Sims, now he's on the floor, but he has to play clean ball with four fouls. One away from elimination. Chase Hunter from downtown. The lead is eight. He's got five. 29% three-point shooter. Gives you what you need in a time of need. Under seven to play. Skip pass. Kustar left open. Big response on the other side. It's a huge play from Lawson. A guy unafraid of the moment. Everybody expects him to take the shot. Unselfish delivers for a catch and shoot. Sims left open. All net. 15 points for Amir Sims. The lead back to eight. Where's this been all night? How you leave Sims wide open, I have no idea. One of the lone threats on the floor for the Tigers. Trapping zone pressure now from Clemson Law. Top of the key. Lawson, 20 points for the sophomore. Pro. Absolute pro. Unafraid of the moment. Beautiful stroke. An elite talent. Whip it around. Hunter off the pump fake. Contested triple. Kotsar, the rebound, and that was a big sequence. Lawson should hold on to this basketball. Take his team home for the next six minutes. Kotsar working against Jonathan Bayer. Six to shoot. I'm going to back. Bolden hit from this spot earlier in the half. Not this time. See, that's not understanding the game. Lawson has been lights out. Bolden needs, when he gets that ball, Bolden needs to go right back to Lawson and have him make a play. Lawson distributes right there to Kustard, who bangs down the three. Lawson is the guy that makes things happen. And a catch and shoot. He's in a rhythm. He's come back into this game and made defining plays. Bolden needs to understand that and say, go make something happen again. And let's be honest, he's been the difference. Eight of 12 from the floor, six boards, dropped a couple of dimes as well. He's been everything Frank Martin has needed tonight. Efficient Roy and unafraid to make the pass, too. Trust in his teammates. Sims inside, rejected by Kusnard. Gamecocks with four guards on the floor at the moment. And how about Kusnard with a block? You don't need that. You don't need that shot. You're up nine, five minutes left to play. Run some offense, work some clock. It's your friend. Fifty-seven forty-six. Gamecocks led it by two at halftime. Sims. Well, how about Kusnard? They're erupting their baseline. The late contact. Two free throws coming for Amir Sims. And that's going to be the fourth on Jermaine Kusnard. Sims. Two of five at the stripe. 16 points and he has one more coming. Still a lot of game left, but Sims being in foul trouble has without question hurt the Tigers' ability to generate points. Now you got to explore traps. Clemson Tech, great success all season, generating turnovers. Can they find a few here in the last four minutes and 40 seconds? Here comes Bolden. Carolina escapes the pressure that time. High-low action. Coats are fouled from behind. Newman got there. Too much body. So he picks up his first. Mike Coats are to the strike. Snap decision making for Frank when he catches at that high post position. Manaya, excuse me, finds him. And that's where you collapse that defense. Manaya on that catch has to be quick with his decision. Finds Coats are who's got a great set of mitts to catch that thing, corral, and draw the foul. Hotsar quietly getting the job done today. Six points, five boards. Give him seven now. It's a game that really highlights the depth of South Carolina. Coach Martin said, I may not have that bona fide star, although he has it in Lawson, no question. But they can go ten deep, and guys contributing 
in different spots. Manaya on the backboard to get a second chance opportunity. Can't convert. But it's a different guy making a play here down the stretch for the game time. Manaya just fouled out. Had a chance for three points total on that possession instead over the back. And for Justin Manaya, that's going to be it. Three points, six boards. And you see the five fouls. Sims back to the line, 74% from that location this season. 18 points and one more coming. Now you and I and our producer, Rick Angelo, talked a week ago previewing this game. And one of our first thoughts, first team that gets to 50, 55 points has a great chance to win it. That appears to be the case, although the scoring has picked up in this second half between these two rivals. I expect South Carolina to get tight here with this game pressure down the stretch. This could get interesting. Lawson baseline. Finds Kotsar. And a foul as Kotsar hung in the air. You can be aggressive and still not foul. There's no need to foul Kotsar on the pass. There. there is a need to identify a shooter who's ready to catch and release there. You can play fast, but still think it through defensively. And Clemson needs to be aware of that here down the stretch. Keyshawn Bryant getting set to check back in for head coach Frank Barton. Big free throw for Kotsar. He's got eight points. Don't forget Sports Center tonight, 11 Eastern. John Anderson, Kenny May. They'll have Rams, Cowboys, Beals, uh, Steelers postgame reactions. All four teams fighting for a playoff bid. Plus Lakers, Hawks highlights. How did LeBron do? Sports Center, 11 Eastern on ESPN. The ESPN app. It's been fun watching LeBron with his son, Bronny, these last couple of weeks. He's done a great job. The high school circuit, trying to make a name for himself. I'd say he's doing that. Had to feel pretty surreal to be at Ohio State, watching your son play your alma mater in St. Vincent, St. Mary's, and a sold-out crowd for that game. For a high school matchup. Pretty cool stuff. Our good friend Paul Biancardi, part of the broadcast teams there. Meanwhile, Father LeBron in his 17th year is legitimately an MVP candidate in the league. It is remarkable what he's been able to do. Yeah, Lakers are fun again, and they're good. Father time on his side. Five to shoot for Carolina. Bolden. Fade away. And a foul's going to be called against the Tigers. Timeout on the floor as we step aside. The Gamecocks in position here in Clemson. We start the show with a look at the hardware on display. A couple of national championship trophies. That one in the middle, the Palmetto Series title, goes to the winner of the annual contest between these two sides, celebrating all the major sports. And who proves victorious more than the other? This certainly would be an enormous win for head coach Frank Barton in South Carolina on the road. He's yet to defeat Clemson in this building. He did beat the Tigers in Greenville four years ago over at Bon Secours Wellness Arena when this facility was being rehabbed, if you will. And it's a rivalry that means something to both coaches for recruiting, for bragging rights. Coach Martin even acknowledged he addressed his team and wanted to teach them the history of what this rivalry means. So much in college basketball, we as broadcasters and play-by-play -play guys build up rivalries, and these athletes are 18 to 22 year olds that don't know the history. So we're out here pontificating about it, and they're wholly unaware. That is not the case with this rivalry because of these two coaches and their desire to have their players be aware of what it means. Pontificating. English major? English major. There we go. That's all I needed. <laughs> Lead is 12. <laughs> Tigers need a sense of urgency here at home. Newman off the mark. The rebound claimed by Sims. A lot of contact bottled up. And Teddy Valentine, the foul call against South Carolina. Frank. And Frank Martin. Really didn't like that last call. Yeah. 
it's worth noting. Of course, Brunel squad, Clemson trailing by 12, still 11, still game left. But Coach Brunel, you got to feel for him with his squad. I mean, this team was going to be a lot more formidable than they currently are because Jonathan Bear has not become the player that he once was yet, and that'll come with time. And Clyde Trapp, which forgives so many of the issues with this team, has yet to take the floor, both as a point guard, a defender, another scoring option. This is a shade of what this team should be in this point in time. And talking with both coaches today, they both feel like, and a lot of guys will tell you this about their squads, but in short order, there's a chance for significant improvement. The youth on the Carolina side getting much needed game reps. Lawson swatted away at the last minute. Mack may have gotten there. And then for Clemson, the injured players, primarily Clyde Trapp back in the mix in about 10 days. Tevin Mack in a rivalry game that means so much to him. Just can't get going. Another one of those scoring options. Three double-figure guys. He hasn't had his opportunities today. Been a domino effect for the Tigers on their home floor. And yeah, Mack just one of seven from the court. Under two and a half to go. Kuznar with seven to shoot. Quick look to Kotsar inside. And how about the hustle by Mike Kotsar, but a shot clock violation. Right, that, that and it should rim. reset. Yeah, that should be a fresh 20 seconds. The new rule, it doesn't reset to 30. It resets to 20 seconds. And that's an error on the, on the shot clock, and they'll get this one right. This will ultimately be South Carolina possession. And big-time credit to Kotsar. Get on the floor there and try and make something happen. Give his team another possession. That's a senior for you. It's a leader. Frank Martin animated. Make no mistake about it. South Carolina has taken this crowd out of the game today. The way the Gamecocks have defended. And this kind of hustle by a veteran leader like by Kozar. No question hits the iron there. And that's why the shot clock should reset. But the effort to win the 50-50 basketball. It's a beautiful thing. You see the new rules this season. One of the major ones, the shot clock resetting, or an offensive rebound to the front court instead of going back to 30, goes to 20. And I, I'm a big fan of that rule. I'm not sure the deeper three is something I like a lot of, and especially in the quarters because guys are tentative. You can't step into the shot as much because you're scared you're going to step out of bounds. But, Roy, this is what I ask you, man. What are you preparing for when you're playing college basketball, the next level? And that discrepancy between the NBA three and a college three – it's too, it's too stark of a contrast. Now, that's not the ultimate deciding factor for doing this. It's to create more spacing and have more free-flowing offense. But that has not been a direct result. All you've seen is dismal numbers from beyond the arc from some shooters. And some defunct offenses. Yeah, I agree, but I like the three-point shot. I like dunks and threes. You don't like change, huh? Well, you no, I don't mind change. <laughs> I, I like scoring. And I think... I hear you. I hear you. You know, the NFL has it figured out where they've done the best job that they can to protect quarterbacks and to make sure the receivers have a chance to catch the football cleanly. Same thing in college football. And they're going to reset the shot clock here, give South Carolina the ball out of bounds under having remedied that. I, this Let's do it in hoops. It, but this should enhance it. You right? think? And with the spacing, it should enhance... Offensive movement, cutting lanes, driving lanes. We simply haven't seen it yet. I don't know how much it's the three-point line as it's the roster turnover and teams figuring out their identities, young guys coming into the game, and guys coming off the bench being elevated into starter minutes. I truly believe that's why you're seeing the offensive struggles we have out of the gates in college basketball. Big possession for A.J. Lawson in South Carolina. They'll whip it around the horn. Bold and left open. Count it. And Frank Martin's going to call a timeout sensing this one is his game cocks to win largest lead at 13. Bolton came out of the gates really tentative made some poor decisions didn't have the edge found himself on the bench credit to the resiliency of that young man to take the coaching a learning lesson coach wants a timeout to talk about it but a big time play from Bolton he's made a few of those down the stretch 10 points tonight three rebounds Jair Bolden a redshirt junior out of Brooklyn Coach emphatically telling his guys, make sure you defend the three. Keep guys in front. No driving kicks. You allow the drive. It opens up for the kick to three-point shooters. 
play fundamentally sound defense so many times in this situation. You see the Olay defense from guys just allowing driving lanes, quick baskets. Then it gets dicey. Continue to play the defense that got you here. And that's the reiteration coming from Coach of the Huddle. Less than two to play. South Carolina showing token full court pressure. Newman was hammered. He'll shoot two. Surprised they went with the full court pressure. They speed it up, allowing for Clemson to get to the goal quicker. Advancing that ball via the air and to get to the free throw line. No surprise they didn't settle in the half court there and really guard for a Clemson team that's struggled all evening to generate anything. And Frank Martin joked with us before tip off. He said, you know what? These guys, I love my team. We've got some growing up to do, but sometimes I get a little frustrated. I may come over there and sit with you guys courtside and we'll call the game together if it doesn't go the way I want it to. But I'll tell you what, they've responded in a major way on the road against their arch rival in this one. As the Tigers turn it over. Think when, think this one doesn't mean a lot to him? He doesn't stop. And, and, and that's, that's his mentality. He approaches everything in life with a passion. He expects the same from his guys. That's why he's built a program that has seen a Final Four appearance and is one of the toughest teams year in and year out. You talk about guys that love their coach in a culture where nobody wants to be yelled at, nobody wants to be challenged. These Gamecocks, they thoroughly enjoy it, embrace the challenge, and have answered the call this afternoon. 87 seconds remaining. It'll stay with Clemson. Second half, South Carolina has been dominant, especially on the defensive end of the court. Tigers unable to get kind of open looks that they've needed. And really, with Amir Sims on the bench for a large portion of our second half with those Crushed four him. fouls, Crushed. major issue. Crushed him, Roy. I, I mean, this team doesn't have somebody to produce on that end consistently. Tevin Mack is their score, is their go-to guy. Struggled mightily, and I think it was because he was probably pushing, having grown up in Columbia, just a, just a stone's throw away from campus there in South Carolina, doing too much. Dawes at the point guard position is mistake-prone because he's young and learning the role, and you couple that all together, and you need Sims on the floor. And with those four fouls saddled for minutes, South Carolina built and ultimately held on with just 90 seconds here. Barring a miracle, looks like the Gamecocks will get the road win. Don't forget, coming up tomorrow night, a very big tilt for Monday Night Football. Jacoby Brissett and the Colts in New Orleans to take on Drew Brees and the 10-3 and Saints. Colts need a win to keep their playoff hopes alive. Well, the Saints hope they can still get a bye in the first round in the NFC. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Over on ESPN, ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. Coverage, of course, starts with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern. Well, the Gamecocks will try to dot some I's, cross some T's. If you're Frank Martin, what are you telling your team at this late juncture? You're telling them to, to, to just continue to stay fundamentally sound. Continue to take care of the basketball in these last 90 seconds. No crazy fouls, no crazy risks. The game is in firm control. Make your free throws, too. Sounds so simple. <laughs> it's a lot of that, a lot to ask, too. Frank the Coats are. And Sims just fouled out. Coats are a chance for three. And the finishing touches on a resounding road win in this rivalry series. Sims has to leave with his head up high. He competed for every minute he was on the floor. A very physical South Carolina team took it to his chin, got him in foul trouble. That's executing a game plan, Coach Martin's squad, and Sims didn't get the help. Coats are 11 points. Much more active in the second half. Extra pass to Newman. And a foul against Coatsar. So South Carolina can use this certainly as a springboard. We mentioned the next game coming up against Virginia. The Cavaliers defending champs. That game will be on the road in Charlottesville over on ABC on December 22nd. That's a game after a victory like this, Jordan, that all of a sudden looks much more winnable, and especially with a Virginia team that struggles to score this season. No question, but they're going to have to figure out some things defensively. Amir Sims, similar build to Mamadi Diakite. Sims had a big night this evening. 
Diakite is more skilled offensively and, and has a little bit more to him, or at least of equal skill set there. The guard, Kihei Clark, his ability to carve up a defense, low center of gravity of 5'9", will be a challenge for South Carolina's defenders on the perimeter. Bolden, like a wide receiver, tracked that one down. One minute remaining. Beautiful ball movement. Lawson left open. And a rare miss. Fresh 20. On the offensive rebound, and Frank Martin still coaching him up. Lawson. Three to shoot. If you're Brad Brownell, back to the drawing board, and you hope that Clyde Trap makes a big difference moving forward. Yeah, you're one day closer to Clyde Trap coming back, but again, there's going to be some patience involved with Clyde Trap getting acclimated with that ACL. And then you get away from the emotion of a game like this. Tevin Mack, not himself. Newman couldn't really get going. You build off what Sims continues to give you as a scorer. And you keep on plugging away. Four losses in a row for Clemson. But you can't feel sorry for yourselves. The games keep coming. But an impressive one here from South Carolina. Defensively, the toughness. And A.J. Lawson, impressive. Big win for South Carolina on the road as Frank Martin claims a victory in Little John Coliseum for the first time. 67-54, our final score. That wraps it up here in Tigertown. We now send you to Woj and Lowe for a trade season special.